So Paul, this cosmic microwave background is really an amazing gift that uh, the universe has given us for exploring. It's almost like a physics class experiment out in the farthest reaches of the universe. And the amazing thing is it keeps giving. Not only can we do the experiment in the cosmic microwave background, it turns out we can see those ripples today. Yes, this is absolutely amazing. I remember this blew, blew me away when I first learned this was possible. We've talked about all these peaks in the microwave background. So this is telling us there were lumps on the scale back at redshift over a thousand. But of course, if there was a lump then, that means there were more photons in these places at that scale. There was also more matter, both more dark matter and more baryonic matter. And so that presumably is telling us that there were lots of lumps on this scale, this scale, this scale in the distribution of matter back all that time ago. Yep. But presumably those lumps of matter have just sat there ever since. That's because the universe recombined when we see this. Yep, so and no so more bouncing. No more bouncing. That was it. Everything just sort of stayed put. It was only acted upon by gravity. And although that's only a degree in the sky, that's a long ways when it comes to distances now. So in principle, this area here, on that particular scale, there could be lumps of matter. And as time goes on, those lumps will get bigger and bigger as they suck more and more matter in. Yep. And they might have turned into clusters of galaxies and superclusters and things like that by today. Right. So in principle, you could actually see this right now. You could look around the universe and say, are galaxies clustered preferentially on certain scales? And those scales would be these particular lumps from the oscillation, the acoustic peaks right early in the universe. Right. So if we go out, we'll look around in um, space and, for example, here with a giant redshift survey and what our prediction is, we should see those lumps and bumps in that distribution of galaxies. But it's a big scale, so it's a scale that's kind of hard to see. It's a good fraction of that redshift survey right there. So a number of these surveys were done. You need to get measure the positions of a lot of galaxies to make this yeah. work. So Many hundred thousands. Hundreds of thousands. And, and you have to have a really good control of any errors. So for example, if you're a bit more likely to see them in one part of the sky than another because you had better weather when you're observing over here than over there, that will give you a spurious signal that would mimic what you're actually looking for. That's so you have right. to be able to calibrate all these differences out with exquisite precision. But people have done this. And what we're plotting here is how strongly galaxies cluster. This is from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which is one of the two surveys along with you. Um, 2DF Galaxy Redshift Survey that came up with the result both back in 2005. And on small scales, galaxies are very strongly clustered. This is just yeah. things like the Virgo cluster on our local group. This is just galaxies being sucked towards other galaxies. So that's not telling us anything about early universe physics. That's telling us things happened more recently. But by the time you're out on scales of like 100 megaparsecs, that's so enormous that galaxies t are not appreciably attracting each other on those sort of scales. Yeah, they've moved only a tiny little bit. So they're, they're at where they were back at the time of the Big Bang, just with the expansion of the universe. What you can see is clustered strongly, it drops off, it drops off, it drops off, and then suddenly it's a little bump over here. Oh, a little bump. So we're magnifying that bump up here. And so we see that there is an excess of galaxies at this distance of about 100 megaparsecs, just a little bit more. And I should say there's a Hubble constant down there, which we're going to ignore for now. Yes. So this actually, for the current value of the Hubble constant, corresponds to about 150, 160 megaparsecs. Yep. Um, and so it does seem that on that very, those very large scales, the universe is lumpy to this day. And this is just the remains of those acoustic peaks. So that means we have a scale now that we know how long it is in meters based on the physics of the cosmic microwave background. Now that sounds like it could be useful. It is. And we can not only measure it today by looking at nearby galaxies, but we can also go and look at more and more distant samples of galaxies. In each case, you need a sample of your hundreds of thousands of galaxies. But you can do a sample of the nearest 200,000 galaxies, then ones that are a bit further away and a bit further away again. And each of them you can measure how they're clustered, and each of them you can look for this little peak. A little bump, OK. And people have done that and are continuing to do this. And what that gives you is a standard ruler at a whole bunch of different distances. So the nearby one all the way out to one that's at uh, the microwave background, redshift you know, 1080. Okay, so instead of with a supernova where you'd measure how bright things are and you'd see that they're getting fainter, here we're seeing the rulers are getting smaller, although it turns out they do get bigger because of the universe being smaller in the past, we're able to go back and literally measure another way to measure distances. And we have the added value that we have the nearby objects and then we have this really distant measurement as well at a redshift of almost 1100, which you just simply can't get any other way. 
So this is giving us an independent test of how the universe has evolved with time. Why do people care? Well, the thing that's really driving these sort of surveys at the moment is trying to understand what the hell this dark energy is that you discovered. Because at the moment we've got not much clue. I mean, it's making the universe expand faster now. One possible clue would be how it's evolved with time. Is it always behaving the same all the way through time, so giving you a perfect exponential growth curve? Or is it maybe getting stronger or weaker with time? And if we could find any clues to how exactly it's evolving with time, that might give us at least one clue to what the hell this thing is, which at the moment we have very little idea. Well, we certainly could falsify Einstein's cosmological constant, which makes a prediction that it's always the same everywhere in the universe yes. at all times. Now, it turns out the way we normally parameterize this is we say that the density of the dark stuff, whatever it is, is proportional to the scale factor of the universe to the power written here. And the parameter of question is W. And that W is what we call the equation of state. You can think of it as sort of the ideal gas law, except for it's for gravity. And it's a way of parameterizing essentially how the density of material changes as you expand space. Yeah, this gets the density of the dark energy. And for Einstein's theory, this lambda says W is minus 1. So in that case, it's a to the power of 1. Minus, minus 1, so zero, 0 times 3 is 0. So it's a to the 0, which is a constant. Right. So it's telling us, as, just as we know, that for Einstein's model, it's like a zero-point energy, and it doesn't vary the density with time. But it could be that it's something a bit different. So for example, we talked about maybe it being one of those Mexican hat potentials. In that case, it might be rolling down the side of the Mexican hat as we speak, Ooh. in which case W is going to have a different value. It's going to, the density is going to be going down as time goes on, as the universe gets bigger. Right. So instead of minus 1, it might be minus 0.9. Yes. In which case, you would get the fact that the density is falling off slightly differently. And that means that the equation, the, the equation for distance is going to be slightly different. Yes, the universe will be going a bit less exponential. Right. Otherwise, in principle, there could be some strange theories that have it even go the other way. So it actually gets, uh, uh, starts going even faster as it gets bigger. Oh, that would be kind of scary. So we have no particular reason to believe W is anything different from minus 1, but uh, you don't know until you look. Right, and one of the advantages of these baryon acoustic oscillations compared to supernovae is we know the physics of this ruler is sort of fixed. And so we don't really expect it to change back in time because it's just a ruler that we can see way back at the time of the cosmic microwave background. It's imprinted by basic physics. Now. It's been there ever since. Where the supernovae that I tend to study, we know they are a, st a star that explodes. And the universe is changing back in time how stars work. They have different amounts of iron in them, for example. Uh, and they're maybe not as old in the past when they explode as they are now. These things are possible. So we're not quite so sure that the supernovae uh, aren't going to be affected. And there's another really big difference, which is this bloody dust stuff that I hate. Dust makes objects appear fainter. But dust does not make rulers change their length. So that's a little thing that they get to circumvent. Very useful. Mm. So what are they finding so far? What is the value of W that's coming up at the moment? Well, I'm proud to say that the answer they get is almost identical to the supernova answer within the error bars. Uh, they're not quite as precise as the supernova measurements are yet, but given another few years, they're going to have huge surveys of galaxies. Well, they'll be able to match or probably exceed the precision of supernovae in the next five or ten years. And the value of W is? Oh, the W value is the same as the supernovae, which is the Einstein's minus one cosmological constant. Seems to be right bang on still, as well as we can measure it. 